And Dr. Z, what is CSF and why is it so important? Cerebrospinal fluid is a liquid in the brain that's protecting the brain uh, against, uh, you know, uh, uh, different uh, uh, traumas and uh, uh, it's kind of a cushion in which the brain, you know, uh, uh, so uh, CSF uh, is producing several times a day, uh, about five to seven times, so all CSF is exchanged a number of times per day and that CSF uh, uh, needs to uh, flow through the basal parts of the brain and the spinal cord and from there it's reabsorbed uh, into the manus drainage pipe, the path pathways of which the superior sagittal sinus uh, is the main uh, uh, pathway through the uh, uh, arachnoidae villi. So the, any kind of obstruction at the level of the cerebral uh, uh, superior sagittal sinus would lead to uh, possible uh, uh, changes of fluid hemodynamics in the CSF. Now, uh, clearly we looked uh, even uh, very early on when we started to research uh, this uh, uh, cerebrospinal venous insufficiency condition in MS patients, we embarked on some pilot studies uh, to understand how uh, the CSF may be connected with uh, MS and with CCSVI. In one of the first studies, we found that uh, uh, there is a, a difference in amount of CSF flow per cardiac cycle that it's expelled from the Silvius of Aqueduct when we measure the CSF flow uh, between MS patients and healthy controls. We also found that those patients who had cerebrospinal venous insufficiency uh, and more severe cerebrospinal venous insufficiency, those are particularly having decreased CSF flow. Uh, obviously that was a very uh, small study and uh, uh, I, we felt that the, the data needs to be uh, uh, repeated in much larger cohorts. Uh, also, there was another study published uh, on 20 MS patients and 21 healthy controls from the Sweden group that did not uh, find uh, differences between uh, the, these uh, cases and controls. So most recently, we collected uh, and looked 67 MS patients and uh, uh, 35 healthy controls and uh, nine patients with clinically isolated syndrome that was presented at American Academy last year uh, of neurology, and we are in process of publishing this data. Uh, what we found is uh, very interesting. Uh, we found that uh, patients uh, uh, had decreased CSF flow respect to the controls, uh, but not only we found that uh, 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 pulsatile flow, which is going in negative and positive direction uh, is much more negative and much more positive in MS patients than mm -hmm. healthy controls. That means in uh, late words that you need more, more energy, more uh, uh, energy to expel the uh, CSF from the Silvius of, of Aqueduct and that would mean that there is some obstruction to get the CSF out. Now, we found that uh, 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 CS patients have uh, had less, those with first clinical attack, of problems in spelling the CSF flow versus relapsing, remitting, and versus secondary progressive. Uh, another thing, uh, uh, so there is clearly uh, associated with the uh, with, uh, decrease uh, with, uh, with the disease scores. Another problem we found is uh, uh, that amount of CSF flow pulsatility was extremely well related to uh, development of T2 lesions in the brain uh, and especially the T1 lesions, those lesions that are bad, black holes. Also we found that patients who had more relapses in the last year had m lower CSF flow. We found of these nine patients at the first clinical attack, we found that uh, five of them developed clinically definite MS and they had particularly lower flow. So in this study, we found that there is a correlation between CSF flow and clinical 
uh, uh, features in terms of higher number of relapses and a lower and faster conversion to clinically definite than MS in terms of the CSF log. So I think it's a very interesting research uh, that clearly has to be further uh, looked at. What method do you use to measure the CSF flow? So that's a great question. Uh, we are using phase contrast uh, spine MRI imaging at 3 Tesla. Uh, it's a, a, a technique that has been developed many years ago and applied to healthy control studies, stroke studies, hydrocephal studies in elderly population. What we did in uh, our studies is we developed a new tool in defining the region where we are measuring the flow because how you position your uh, uh, circle it, and also through the cardiac cycle, it may uh, uh, vary a lot respect to the uh, uh, values in the flow. Uh, so we had developed a tool called MAC, Minimum Area Contour Change, that finds the best fit through the cardiac cycle in, in uh, uh, of the Silvius of Aqueduct. I think uh, uh, that's clearly a very important step toward, uh, we also validated our technique uh, 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 against the phantoms uh, of known volume. So uh, our uh, values are, uh, we know that they are accurate because we are able to find out the same amount of volume in the phantom. And that's why uh, clearly we believe that our data in healthy controls are, are important versus MS patients. And why, why is that believed to be the best measurement method? Because uh, that, that's a, another good question. Uh, uh, our reproducibility data on uh, two MS patients and two healthy controls are uh, uh, showing that uh, clearly uh, uh, we have a high reproducibility so when a healthy control or MS patients repeats the scan next day we are going to find the, the next value so so I think that it's very important that uh, you are able to reproduce your findings um, we are uh, doing s more in uh, some other studies, not just measuring the, uh, the CSF flow at the level of the Silvius of Aqueduct, but also at the level of Foramen Manum. Uh, so this will be new data, but uh, down the road. Uh, uh, I think that uh, clearly, uh, whether it's the best measurement, you know, I can't answer you on, on your question, but it's definitely better respect to what has been done in the past. And we validated it. And the decrease that you mentioned of CSF flow that you're finding in MS patients, does it have other effects on the patients as well, do you think? That's, uh, I mean, uh, clearly to find out that there are uh, uh, more relapses uh, and that uh, those who have decreased CSF flow are uh, faster converting to clinically definite MS, which means they are uh, developing a second attack in a shorter period of time is extremely important. So yes, the answer is definitely yes, it has clinical consequences. What are the next steps for this research? I think we will need to understand whether uh, treatment, uh, uh, endovascular treatment for CCSVI and the reopening of the jugular veins is influencing the changes in the CSF flow. Uh, uh, this is something uh, that we are working on in a premise study, prospective randomized endovascular treatment study in multiple sclerosis together with the uh, uh, University of Buffalo Department of Neurosurgery. Uh, and we are evaluating CSF flow at the different time points and hopefully we will be able to find out uh, what's going on. What's the most critical takeaway from this, Dr. Z, whether it's a question I've asked you or not? What, what do you think is the most important bit of information that's conveyed? I think the most uh, important information is that until now, nobody ever looked uh, whether hemodynamics of the CSF flow can be uh, connected with uh, uh, classic MS uh, uh, disease features in terms of lesions, atrophy, and uh, relapses. And now we are finding that actually a measure like CSF flow, which is totally uh, representing hemodynamics of the brain, is actually a very good correlate of uh, clinical as well as MRI outcomes, which are signatures of this disease. 
that means that we need to look on this much uh, uh, more carefully and understand whether the impact of the venous uh, outflow drainage is related to the CSF flow. Is there anything you'd like to add, Dr. Smith? No, thank you so much. Okay, thank you.